Good evening, and thank you for joining us for another Midweek Sunday School. So happy that and delighted that you decided to join us. And as always, we do honor our pastor, the Bishop Freeman Morrison, and his lovely wife, Evangelist Jane Morrison. And we thank you for joining us on this uh, evening as we explore the book of Romans yet the more as we talk about um, Paul and how Paul writes this letter to the Romans and we're going to explore some things on today on this evening and we're so happy that you came along with us our uh, and of course we do study out of the Union Gospel Press Sunday School book and our lesson uh, this week is righteousness through faith and our lesson text would be Romans 3 21 through 31 and we'll so read but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short to the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God, we shall justify the circumcision of faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. And our lesson again is righteousness through faith. Now this week we're gonna, I'm gonna, this is one of those lessons that we're gonna pull out a lot of scriptures to really find the goody in this lesson. Now last week lesson taught us that all have sinned and that all are guilty of sin. When our righteousness is compared to God it is as filthy rags. This week's wet lesson shows us that only faith in God makes us worthy of God's righteousness. We cannot say enough, we cannot do enough, we cannot live holy enough to deserve the gifts of God. But by His grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, in Ephesians 2 and 8. We as Christians are to daily live sinless lives. The scripture does not permit us to sin, but it allows the perfecting of the saints. And let me say that again. We as Christians are to daily live sinless lives. The scripture does not permit us to sin in any way but it allows for the perfecting of the saints. Now let's go jump straight into the lesson. Verses 21 through 22. It says, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all, and upon all of them that believe, for there is no difference. Listen, the law of Moses was not given to make God righteous. 
God righteousness is supernatural and exceeds the law. The law was given to give men a guide on how to live in a lawless world. The law was, however, incomplete until Christ came. You'll find that in Romans 8, 3 through 4, and Matthew 5, 17 through 20. Now we with Christ as our chief priest and the Holy Ghost as our leader can obtain and live sinless lives and holy lives. Seeing the only thing we're really saying is that the law did not make you righteous. It was God that makes us righteous because there were some things that the law could not do that only Jesus could do, right? Verses 23 through 24 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And you might ask, where is the law? If you want to know what the laws are, you start reading from Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and you'll find the law that was given from God to man. But even in that, it was incomplete because there was another gift that had to be given. And we find that in the New Testament, that gift was Christ. Now, 1 Peter 4 and 8 tells us that love covers a multitude of sin. And we all know that Christ is love. When we put on Christ, His righteousness covers our unrighteousness. When God looks on humanity through his holy and his majestic eyes, he sees nothing but sin and sinners. So when we put on Christ, God now sees his sons and daughters. You'll find that in Isaiah 61 and 10. What we're saying is that when we put on Christ, the scripture says, uh, now this mortality, this mortal must put on immortality and this corruption must put on incorruption. It's just like getting dressed. You have to put on Christ and Christ will cover us in our sins. Understanding it like that, then when we get to verse 25 and through 28, it says, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Now, remember I told you that Christ is a cover. He covers us so that when God sees us, God does not see our sin, but he sees Christ's righteousness. When we accept Christ and the finished work on the cross, our past sins are forgiven. He justifies he makes us credible saints. With all that being said, we now understand that it is not the law that saves us, nor is it any deed that we can do that saves us. The only thing that saves us is faith in Jesus and his finished work. Habakkuk 2 and 4 teaches us that the just shall live by faith. It is not what you can do, but it's how you live that saves you. And we can only live by faith. There is nothing that you can do so good that you can inherit eternal life. The only thing you can do is accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that's the best thing you can do. And when you put on Christ, then Christ will teach you different ways in which to go. So I don't want you to get confused and say, oh, uh, McDonald's said that I can sin if I want to because there's nothing I can do that, uh, that can make me 
miss heaven. Because I don't want you to get confused with this, with the doctrine of I can do whatever I want to do. And since I'm saved, since I didn't gave the preacher my hand, then God my heart, then if I can continue sinning and then uh, still make it to heaven. That's not so. Paul addresses that mindset and that thought uh, later on. Right here in these next verses, actually in verse 29 through 30. He said, is the God, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. We as Christians must remember that God alone is judge and jury. We must remember that we are all being perfected. This is the whole purpose of coming in Christ is to become perfected. So we should not judge those that are not as far along their journey as others. Now, if you are one of them people that you're not having any desire to be perfected in Christ, and you want to continue doing what you want to do, this lesson is not talking about you. This is for those ones that are being perfected, that every day is trying to get close to God, every day is trying to clean up their life. So sometimes we think that the scripture gives us the license to sin. But look at verse 31. He says, see, uh, uh, excuse me, verse 31, do we uh, then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Listen, because we have Christ, we now can live the law more perfect, more perfectly. Because we have a leader, a guider, a great consolator. When we put on Christ, when we get Christ, then he gives us the ability to be holy. He gives us the ability to live right. He gives us the ability to treat people right. Now, we don't judge people that don't live right and don't have enough of Christ in them yet. This is a journey. Every day we're getting more and more like Jesus. Every day we should be pulling off sin and putting on more righteousness. But we can't judge those people that are not. But what makes us able to live right is that man that lives within us. It is Jesus. He is the great consolator. John 14 and 26 says, But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall what? Teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. See, now we have help. Now we have something on the inside, someone on the inside that leads and guides us to all truth. We don't have to even uh, take time to, uh, well, you should take time to read the whole law. But even if you don't ever read the whole law and see what it was all about, that that is within you will teach you and guide you and tell you what you should and should not be doing. When Jesus entered the holy city on what was to be his final week, he was fully aware of what was going to transpire. Luke 9, 51 says, When the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. He was the Lamb of God, John 1 and 29 says, about to die for the sins of humanity. This was foreordained before the foundations of the world. 1 Peter 1 and 20 and Revelations 13 and 8 says, For the most part, the four evangelists, the four evangelists do not interpret the events of Christ's life at least in great detail. They record what happened but say relatively little about what, why it happened. They all, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all tell you that Christ died and all that. But they didn't really tell you why Christ died. Romans and other epistles help us understand the ongoing relevance 
of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. When Jesus died, it was not a tragedy. It was the fulfillment of God's plan to free sinners from the curse of sin. It was the fulfillment of God's plan to free sinners from the curse of sin. Christ died. And it wasn't a sad day when Christ died. Not for you and I. It was a happy day. Because his death, his blood being shed, his resurrection, it gave us the uh, ability, the, the ability to be able to cry out, Lord, forgive us, to have mercy. It gave us the ability to be redeemed from sin. That's the whole purpose of Christ's death, was to, be, to redeem man from sin and back to the Father. And Paul, in this lesson, is letting us know that the law couldn't do it. Rules couldn't do it. Rules keep us in order and keep things in line, but they can't save you. You still have to follow rules. You still have to follow regulations, but they can't save you. Only the blood of Jesus. The old song used to say, oh, what can wash away my sins? What can make me whole again? And then the, the back, the rap would say, nothing but the blood of Jesus. There is only one thing that can wash us, that can save us. You can try to live this book, but you cannot live the Bible on your own. You need help. God recognized that we needed help. That's why he promised to send us a helper. He promised to send us help to live holy. Because he knew we were living in a sinless, in a sinful and lawless world. So he gave us help. And that was what Jesus came through. And listen, you can't receive this help any other way but by faith. You have to believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. We have to believe. The gospel is that Jesus lived and he died, but the next part is it that he rose again. You have to believe that, accept that, and when you believe it and you accept it, then living right will become easier day by day. We only will uh, experience eternal life if we receive Christ now by faith. This is such a beautiful lesson. Paul is telling the, the church of Rome, the church in Rome, that you can't do this by yourself. You can't do it trying to be like somebody else, trying to do it like somebody else. You have to get Christ for yourself and do it the way that Christ would have you to do it. I hope that this short uh, explanation has enlightened you in the Word of God. But most importantly, I wanted to help, I want you to get into your mind that you can be changed. Even if you're in sin, you receive the helper to help you out of sin. You can't save yourself. You can't deliver yourself. Mama can't deliver you. Daddy can't deliver you. Only the regenerative power of God can do it. So I say to you that if you're not saved today, I say to you that you're, you're not living according to the word of God. And you know how you're supposed to live. You know how you're supposed to walk upright. And those of you that are not doing it, I say to you today to give Christ your heart. And tell Christ to come in and wash you and cleanse you and abide in you. Because he said that if I abide in you and my word abide in you. See, you got to get Christ in you. Christ is the word. Christ will teach you. Tell God to wash you. And even you that are claiming to be saved. And you are noticing that from this year, from last year to this year, 
there's been no change in your life. You still doing the same things you still doing. You need to tell God, give me more of you. We need to go back to praying. We need to go back to having conversation with God and being specific and telling God exactly what we want him to do. Oh, in times like this, we need a friend. In times like these, we need a lot of things, but the main thing we need is a savior. And I'm glad I have a savior. I'm glad I know that Christ Jesus will save you. From the guttermost to the uttermost, Christ Jesus saves. You have to receive him. And you can only receive him by faith. Don't, don't look for no uh, bright light to come in your room. Don't look for something to come and shake you. No, receive him and receive him by faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this lesson. And we thank you for those listeners and hearers of your word. Father, we pray that this word becomes life, <clears throat> that it becomes real within the hearts and minds of your people. And as they continue throughout this week, we want you to bless them, bless their hearts, bless their minds, bless them as they go, bless them as they come. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. And please remember to join us on Sunday at 11 a.m. We will be hearing this week a powerful, powerful word from our pastor, Bishop Freeman Morrison. And also join us again next week. And we will be hearing from Mother Glenda McDonald in another midweek Sunday school. God bless you. Shalom.